Okay, John, we're just uh, going through diagnosis. I want you to know how it was I figured out that the mass airflow sensor was bad. Uh, I'm going to go through testing and a little bit of diagrams that I saw on online, and uh, we'll see what results I get from the old one and from the new one. Okay, this is our problem. This is how it's working out here. We're going to try to crank it up. Let's see it. It runs a little bit, but it stalls. Yeah, and it won't stay running. I can smell fuel. I, I checked the spark. It's getting sparked, but I don't think the injectors are injecting the way they should. We have a new fuel pump, a new uh, fuel filter installed, but uh, we're not getting an injection pulse, and it could be we might have some codes. Well, this truck sat for a long time, and I didn't think it had codes. And what we're going to do is go out. I'm going to show you how to pull the codes. First, I'm going to turn the key off. Come out here, and then right here we got your fuse box. I already got the jumper wire ready. And what you do is you look at the the cover to your cap, and you can see where it says. Uh, let's see if I get the light in there. It says T and E one right there. T and E1. T is that middle square, and E1 is the upper far right square. So what we we'll do is, you can see where I got the jumper. It's in the middle slot, and it's going into the E1 slot. So now we got our jumper there. Come all the way to the back to the ignition switch. Get in the truck. Shut it. And now we're going to count codes. You have to put that jumper wire in. If you don't, the codes won't flash. So this is where the check engine light's going to be. We're going to power up the ignition switch and count codes. We have one, two, three, one. One, two, three. Four, five, one. That's a very long pause, so it's starting over one, two, three, one. That's code thirty one. One, two, three, four, five. That's code fifty one. One. Oh, I counted the five, not the one. One, two, three. One, that's 31. One, two, three, four, five. One, that's code 51. So it's going to flash that three times and then start all over again. One, two, three. One, it's code 31. One, two, three, four, five. One, code 51. So we got a code 31 and a 51. So now what we're going to do is uh, look up those codes. And I already wrote some of them, the two down, so I did this beforehand. And if you look at code 31 is for intake air temperatures, or no, code 31 is airflow meter signal, vacuum sensor signal, and 51 is switch signal. So that means power is not getting through my mass airflow sensor for some reason. So what we're going to do is we're going to test it. And uh, I'm going to go remove the one out of the chart so we can put it here on the table. That's the new one and we're going to cross test it with the old one. So let me go grab the old one. Got the old one off. And uh, I found this deal here. Uh, AFM connector, that's airflow meter connector pinouts. And the pinout test is really simple. So first it's telling us to do pinout BB and BC. And if you look on the pinout connector, BB and BC, BB is the fourth one, BC is the fifth one. So I already got my digital multimeter set up. We're setting it to ohms. Look on it there. It says open line. 
And what happens is when you touch the two alligator clips, like so, you should make a circuit. So there's about 3.2 ohms on that, which is wrong. I gotta have my meter uh, recalibrated. So again, we're going to uh, VB and VC. I wish my phone would adjust. VB, VC. So it's the fourth and fifth one. So I'm connecting this one to the fifth. Got 103.7 BBC should say it's about 100. Let me double check that. Okay, real quick, I just had to double check because it didn't seem like I was getting the same readings as I was earlier, but it turns out it is. I just made a mistake on the step. So you got these steps to follow. One, first, we're going to do... First, we're going to do um, BB and BC. I wish my darn phone would focus. Anyways... So we're going to test VB and VC. So I'm going to set it back up the way I had it. Okay, we are now at VB and VC. If you look on there, VB and VC is, VB is the fourth one and VC is the fifth one. From left to right. VB is the fourth one, VB, VC is the fifth one. I have 103.5, which is okay. Now we're gonna see what it is on the new one. Okay, now we're checking BB and BC on the new one. Exactly the same. Old one and the new one. Now we're going to step two. Now we're gonna be looking at uh, E2 and BS. I'm gonna set up for that one. E2 and VS is E2 is the third one and VS is the second to the last one. Okay, now we're doing E2 and VS. There's E2 and there's VS. E2 is the third one and VS is the second to the last. That's where I got it here. I have an open line. That means the circuit is broken. And according to this, I should be getting 20 to 400 ohms on E2 and VS, and I'm not getting nothing. That's what I'm getting there. That's what I'm getting here. Now I'm gonna hook up those same wires on the new one. So I got those same exact wires hooked up on the new one. And that's the reading I got, 71.8. Here it says we should be getting anywhere from 20 to 400. So 72.5 is falling between those ohms of resistance. And it changes as cold air starts flowing through the airflow meter. These values change. As you can see on number four, it's giving you at different temperatures and what the values should be at those temperatures. So next is Number two, we're going to check E2 and BC. So we're going to connect that. Okay, now we've got it hooked up to E2 and BC. That's the third position and the third position on the back side. And you can see where it is on here. E2 and BC. There we should be getting E2 and BC 100 to 300 ohms. Of resistance. My multimeter showing open line. That circuit's burnt. And just to show you, this is my wire. Comes this way. Connected to my alligator clips. 
There's my other one, and those are connected to the deal. So my ohm meter is connected to it. Now we're gonna switch it to the new one on the same position. Okay, now it's on the new one. And remember, this is E2 and BC. We got those connected right there. That's what my reading should be on the second, or the third step, I'm sorry. Or second step. It starts at step zero. 182.8. And if you look on here, E2 and VC has to be anywhere from 100 to 300 ohms of resistance. So that classifies as in between that. Now we're going to go to the next step. We're supposed to test E2 and VB. And we'll connect that next. And if you look here, E2 and VB, E2 is the third one still. And VB is the fourth one. And we'll see what we get there. We got that hooked up, E2 and BB. If you look on here, E2 is the third one and BB is the fourth one. That would be the third test. Oops. E2 and BB should be between 200 and 400 ohms. I'm showing an open line on the old master flow. Now we're gonna hook it up to the new one and see what we get. The new one hooked up in the E2 BB slots. That's the third and fourth uh, pin out. That's what we got. 282.5. This one says anywhere between two and 400 ohms. That falls into that category. I can't test the fourth one because it has to be running to get those temperatures uh, in the different uh, ohm re ohms of resistance to be able to tell if it's working or not. But the, if you look at the E1FC, it says it's infinite and open it. So we're going to uh, verify that. So on this one, the fifth one's E1 and FC. FC is the fourth, first one, and E1 is the second one. That's where I got it on the pinout. So it's open line. Infinite open. It's supposed to be an open line. So we're going to verify it on the new one. Okay, now we got the new one hooked up on the FCE1 slots, which is uh, pin 1 and 2. It's open line. Now they match up. So they matched up on the first, on the first test, the 0 for the VBBC. They were the same there. And they're the same on number 5. E1 FC infinite open. Those two results came out identical. The fourth test we can't do unless the vehicle's running. But test one, two, and three failed because the O1 has open lines when the new one doesn't. So that's telling me that that's a big fat failure on that mass airflow sensor or meter. Mass airflow meter. Uh, excuse my mistake. So we're going to go ahead and install the new one. Okay, we got the new airflow sensor on. Fits like a glove. We got this from AutoZone. Need a part number. There it is. That's the AutoZone part number for this air mass airflow meter. There's the old one, so let's go put it on that truck. And uh, see what we got. Okay, we got the airflow meter in. There's that new bad boy with all this other new bad boy stuff. This is going to be a pretty tight little truck. Let's start it and see what it happens. Oh, wait a minute. Got to clear codes first. So we took the wire, the jumper wire out of the diagnostic connector, put the cover back on. Negative cable wipes out the memory. Just give it a few seconds. Oh, this was a totally oh my gosh job. It's been here for a long time. I finally got it done. Different situations caused it to uh, take quite a while to do this. Okay, so I think that's long enough. I'll put the battery back on. Now we're going to go and see if it'll start right up. Back in it. Okay, 
first we're gonna prime up the fuel pump. Cross your fingers. Oh no. Try something else. I'm gonna reset the timer on the distributor. Hopefully that's it. Okay, after checking moving the distributor, that didn't make no difference. Now what I did was I stuck the jumper wire back in to see if I still had any codes, and apparently I do. Now we fixed the master flow sensor code. One, two, three, four, five. Let's one. Two, three, four, five, one. One, two, three, four, five, one. Okay, so we got a code 51 that we still haven't taken care of. And I think I read that and it said something about switch signal. So I'm going to have to investigate that a little bit and I'll come out with a second video for that code. But so far, our truck's still not going. It cranks up a little bit longer than it does. I mean, uh, starts up a little bit longer than it did, but now we've got other issues. So we're going to find out what a code 51 is and that'll be in my next video. Okay, thank you very much.